And the last and not least is waste. And waste from the lean product principle is basically saying trimming all the non-valued added actions and considering all the non-valued actions and you know working with whoever, whatever party it is, maybe it's um, your uh, project control board, maybe it's um, some status group or some stakeholder requirement that you have to manage. Maybe somebody says they want the daily report and how you would manage that. How can I minimise that wastage of my time to create a Word document every day which might be read once a week? But waste is actually a lot more dangerous in an agile project than anywhere else. And that is because, uh, oh, I'll just walk for a second. If I have a project and I have six people all on my team and they're all coming from a waterfall um, approach, okay? and all their experiences are based on process theory. But if I actually throw them into an agile project, when they see something they don't like, they will always refer back to their best experiences in the past, which are waterfall. And what they'll start trying to do is place, answer all the problems in, with process. And what will happen is that process will layer on top of an agile project to remove any level of agility in the end, because you actually fall back to the theory. Uh, so what I have to do in my wastage and my considerations is to cons look at the answers that they're giving me and find out what is the true problem and what is the true result. A good example, I was working on a project uh, we, where I was to transition the team to Agile. They came from a RUP experience and we, I introduced user stories to them. And they struggled to take a user story and actually finish when you and understand when a, sto a user story ends and when the detail comes and how the detail is produced. They, they couldn't understand the way in which to work, so they said we should, we should need to revert back to use cases. And what I had to try to explain to them, what is it in the use case that you need? It's not the use case you want, it's something within it. And in the end all it was was a template. So I said okay, we'll take the bits of the template, but let's put it into our wiki and we move forward from there because I did not want to fall back from real time uh, management of documents. Uh, and that was a way in which I had to minimise wastage. Because if I had brought use case, I could have easily said, okay, if you like use cases, use them again. But the wastage that will come with that, I have to absorb onto the team. And I have to try and minimise that at all times. So this is what Agile had to do. These are the questions that Agile people were asking themselves before they even invented the word Agile. And we just what was happening was there was a number of different people coming up with different types of theories. Some of them were in agreement, some of them were conflicting one another. And then, um, I suppose it's like any of the, you know, any major church organisation when you have to stop the saints and uh, change it around. So they had to come up with some way to be able to change it around, to correlate all their beliefs into something. And they came up with what was called the Agile Manifesto. Now this was created in 2001, uh, and it's you know some people would like to change it, but uh, in the end, it's the all I really want you to understand is the thought and concept behind the word Agile. Agile came from a number of people meeting in a log cabin in Colorado that had different ways that they were applying lead principles, calling them theories with, you know, with, their, with their names attached, and they had to agree what were they agreeing upon. And in the end, what they're saying is that uh, we believe on the, the left hand side more than we do on the right. That's not to say that we ignore everything that's on the right hand side, because you can't. But what we have to say is that when I, if I have a, you know, if I'm trying to balance things out, I'm going to balance all my answers more to the right than to the left. I'm going to work closer to the right than to the left. I can't ignore them. So, for example, uh, working software over comprehensive documentation. Uh, it's a, to me, in my mind, but one of the problems I have with waterfall is that you certain success criteria isn't can't gauge success. I can't say I finished writing as functional spec as being a success point because A, it's, it's liable to change, but as well as that, the client realises nothing if they have a functional spec. The end user will realise nothing if there's a nice functional spec. So when I'm trying to measure progress, I need to measure it in a different way. And I like going with the Agile Manifesto working software. What have I, what have I appreciated on this project? that can produce any level of return on investment for my client, for my user. Uh, and just one other one, say, responding to change or following a plan. Uh, and what that's saying is that, okay, look, I don't want to hold you to a con I don't want to hold you down to something you said six months ago. I 
want to we, I want to be able to give you the ability to reflect and adapt this product to best suit your needs. Uh, and my best example of that one is where, as a developer, I was working in a waterfall project, and this guy came to me and said, you know, this is a really my, all my clients are having this serious problem. It could be really easily solved, and and I reckon this is how we could solve it. It would you know take less than a day day's work. And my answer to him was. It wasn't in the plan, it wasn't in the functional spec, I'm not doing it. I, asked, I basically said you need to go through the project manager and you know, get raised to change requests, etc, etc, etc. And in the end it didn't get done and it was the biggest, and the project was seen as, a, it was, a, it was actually seen as quite a failure because everybody had this experience, this problem all the time and it was something very simple. Uh, so I have to be able to have, give my client the control that they need to be able to manage and change their requirements going forward. It has to be in a controlled fashion, and that's what Agile is going to try and deal with. Now, I'm not saying all of this because I just like to live in a nice world. I'm saying it mainly because um, it will effectively save you money. You will work fa at a faster rate than in the past. And what you will do is you'll work on the most important items for your user base at that time, because you will always look and work on your highest priority. Your highest priority will change every iteration. So you're always going to be able to give the highest return of investment at all times. As long as you, as a client or a you as the product owner, stay in touch with what has been delivered against what was asked for. I like to, answer, to, to visualize that with this, with this slide. So what I'm trying to say is don't far, plan too far ahead. You know, to, don't overreach in your project. I know you need to understand, appreciate within your domain what overreaching is, but don't overreach and try to consider too much ahead, because where some of it is going to be likely to change. Where is the risk in looking so far ahead? And um, go the step or reach one step at a time. I'd like to deliver things on a regular basis to be able to get to my final target. And that, this is how I work it. And um, I like to have releases, releases to production, or. Um, and maybe if you have a project where there's only one release, well, I'll have a false horizon where I'll have release to a production-like server, where maybe the end user won't get to use it, but um, the product owner will, the key stakeholders will be able to actually see it. So we can we can always talk about how what return of investment actually means. Return of investment may be that just the product owner or the people who will determine the success of this project will actually get to see something before the user. Maybe it's a website and the user will get to see something before. The the client will be able to see if it, uh, if it was successful or not. Okay, so what we're trying to do is have iteration points within our project where, and then release. So we can actually release on a regular basis and realize the return investment quickly. Now, why I have iterations? Because if I make a mistake in iteration one, well, I'd be able to change it uh, within iteration two. I want to be able to have reflection points and um, planning points within each iteration. I want to start an iteration, consider what's the highest priority, what the business really require, and how hard is that to do right now. Is there any technical complexities that come with that? And then when I actually have ran a release, I want to actually see if what the client asked for is what they got. Were we able to deliver what we said we could deliver? I want to be able to appreciate and realize velocity 